The Steve Lobby Agency presents The Christian Publishing Show, a podcast for writers who want to advance Christ's kingdom using the written word. Here's your host, Thomas Umstadt Jr. Audiobooks are one of the fastest growing parts of the book business. Year over year growth far exceeds paper books and ebooks combined. If you are not pursuing audiobooks for your book, you are doing your book a disservice. And yet so many authors, and especially so many indie authors, don't pursue getting an audiobook, or if they do, they don't know how to market it. And that is what we're going to talk about today on the Christian Publishing Show. Our guest is an indie author and the author of the popular Fall of Man series. He writes epic, imaginative, biblical fiction with heart-pounding plots and lyrical prose. Uh, Brennan McPherson, welcome to the uh, Christian Publishing Show. Thanks so much, Thomas. How you doing? Doing all right. So before we talk about audiobook marketing, I feel like we should first talk briefly about audiobook production. You can't market an audiobook that doesn't exist in the first place. Now, in the past, I've recommended that authors just go to acx.com, which is owned by Amazon and Audible, because it's super easy and doesn't cost any money. Uh, So you just go there, you put your book, and you're ready to go. But you recommend a competitor, Findaway Voices. So walk us through the pros and cons of Findaway as opposed to ACX. Yeah. Uh, well, with Findaway, you have uh, additional distribution options. And so I've begun to really lean more toward Findaway Voices, particularly for these distribution options, because they allow you to market your book more effectively than uh, if you went with ACX. Uh, currently, of course, Audible does not allow you to adjust your price at all, and um, there's when you go through ACX, you can't set up price promotions or anything like that. But through Findaway Voices, they're actually opening up programs where you can set promotional pricing for uh, particular lengths of time on different uh, on different retailers. So right now. Uh, Findaway is also the only uh, way that you can get your audiobooks onto the platform Chirp, which is an audiobook platform that the company BookBub created. BookBub, many of you will be familiar with them. They created basically uh, the world's biggest book promotion newsletter. And they've done the same thing with audiobooks now with Chirp, but it's their own retailer platform. So for example, if you set up a Promotional pricing through Findaway Voices on Chirp at, for $0.99, cents, they'll, if you get accepted on Chirp, they'll then send out an email to their list of tens of thousands of readers, and you get promotion that way. So because of these promotional opportunities, I lean more toward Findaway Voices because their process for getting your audiobook made is very similar to ACX. Yeah, one of the big tools for marketing is controlling pricing, right? being able to have a limited time low price or even make the book free or nearly free for a short period of time to get a lot of excitement. So you bring in a lot of people for that low price and those people start talking and they bring in full priced people behind them. And a lot of people don't realize this, but Audible prices all books more or less the same. It's a formula based off of the number of hours the audiobook is, is what creates the list price for the audiobook, especially if you're coming in through ACX. But even publishers often have it as a multiple of the number of hours. So the thinking is all hours are the same. And then, of course, Audible really pushes people to pay via credits rather than through dollars. So it's a very kind of distorted system. And when it came out, it was very revolutionary. Brennan, I'm sure you remember this. Audiobooks used to cost $40 for an audiobook, and they were on CD, and it was awful. Everything was awful. The price was awful. CDs were terrible format for audiobooks. And Audible made all of that better, but they haven't really done anything recently uh, to put marketing tools in the hands of indie authors, especially. They'll do their own promotions, but they tend to only promote their very best selling books. And they don't have a lot of things that you can do yourself to market your audiobook. But Chirp, which is a competitor to Audible, does. So what, now I know you've done a uh, campaign through Chirp. Walk us through what that was like. What was it like putting your book on Chirp, and how does Chirp work? Well, because I published my book through Findaway Voices, it automatically was uploaded to Chirp because I had that in the distribution queue. Uh, And then 
once my book had been out for a while, then you have the option to submit your book for a Chirp deal. It's like submitting your, your ebook for a featured deal on BookBub. It goes through the same process. Their editors review your book or your audiobook and decide whether or not um, your audiobook at that price would fit their consumers. And then uh, they reviewed the audiobook that I had submitted. And uh, at 99 cents, they decided that they wanted to send out the promotional uh, deal. And so uh, when I submitted, they accepted. It was a 99 cent deal. They sent out the email. And then the promotional price remains there on Chirp for a full month. And it's actually, it's pretty nice because after the featured deal, then you continue to get promoted by Chirp for the rest of the whole month. So I had, you know, close to 400 sales on the the day that the email went out and then 150 after that and then a daily amount of sales. So overall, over the whole month, I got over a thousand sales of the audiobook. Which is a lot of sales for very little effort on your part, right? You yeah. submit, chirp. Oh, the only people who know about Chirp are the people on Chirp, so it doesn't really affect your sales in other places. You know, Chirp is a world unto itself, and there's not a lot of things in the book business where you just kind of push a button and you get a thousand plus sales of your book. Yeah, and it's wonderful because if you're if you have a bunch of other books on the platform and it's in a long series, then you you promote the first one, and boom, you just got a thousand new readers to your whole series. You can even do a free promotion on Chirp. I'm I'm thinking about doing that in in the future, but also, you know, you can just set your book to free permanently through Find a Way, and that can be a really good strategy uh, on a plat on a retailer like Chirp because free books always get prime positioning in their catalog. You can filter books for the free ones and find them very easily. Uh, that still can be a very powerful way to drive new listeners because. For most of us mere mortal authors, um, we're not household names, so it's difficult to get people who've never heard of you to then pay fifteen, sixteen, or more dollars to listen to an audiobook that you've put out. So these pr- price promotions are absolutely essential to growing your audience. And then once people check out your book and love it, they're okay spending fifteen dollars on the next book. And while it's beneficial for them to know who you are, it's even more beneficial for them to have read and enjoyed one of your books. But the most beneficial thing is they don't just know who you are and they've read and enjoyed one of your books, but you also have their email address. You can tell them about your next (laughs) book. That's when suddenly this becomes a really powerful engine for having really solid book launches or your new book has this huge flood of new fans. Now, I know you have some creative strategies for turning audiobook listeners into email subscribers. How do you do that? Well, Obviously, the number one thing that you want to do is craft something on your website that you can give away for free in exchange for people signing up to your email list. It's called a lead magnet. It's it's incredibly important because otherwise people are not just going to go to your email uh, onto your email list just to get new release announcement announcements. Um, they're they're buying into getting emails that's going to take work for them to go through and delete from their their inbox. So you need to give them something of value. And at the end of an audiobook, then you you tell them exactly what that valuable proposition is and tell them where they can get it. And then you will have a certain percentage of people who listen, then go to your website and download that and get on your email list. And so what do you give away at the end of your audiobooks? Uh, at the end of my audiobooks right now, I'm giving away a free ebook. It's a short ebook, a novella that I'd written. So you you feature the ebook at the end of the audiobook. You say go to this website to download it, and then they type in their email address at emails. Are you using um, book? What are, what are you using to, to deliver that story origin or book funnel? Book funnel. Book funnel is so easy to use and it's really cheap. It's really one of the best ways to deliver your um, your ebooks, uh, your digital files, and soon they will be expanding out into audio uh, territory. I mean, they've already begun expanding into giving audio content through BookFunnel, but they're going to be building that out more. Yeah, audio is difficult on purpose. A lot of people don't realize this, but loading an MP3 onto your iPhone is specifically designed to be difficult. It's one of the few things where Apple uh, has not made it easy. So 
if I were to email you an MP3, you couldn't load that MP3 into your iPhone in any easily, uh, easily accessible way. And you were like, why is that? Because Apple had deals with the music industry to fight piracy. And yeah. they want you to buy songs through iTunes back when, you know, back when it was called iTunes. Now it's called Apple Music. But it's the same idea. They want you to pay them for music. They don't want you to be able to load MP3s on your phone easily. And so what happened to kind of squelch piracy has also affected podcasters and audiobook narrators you know there's no easy way to load a podcast or a, a podcast episode or an audiobook onto your phone without a special app which is how chirp works chirp has a chirp app and i will say i was very impressed with it i've used a bunch of different audiobook apps and the chirp app works exactly the way you expect it to i didn't hit any glitches or any bugs which is more than i can say for some of their competitors um, even audible for years had kind of a glitchy app uh, they're all getting better, but that's I, what I expect is what um, BookFunnel is going to have to do. They're going to have to create some kind of BookFunnel app that you're able to load the, the audiobook into, which is also probably why it's not ready yet, because apps are way more expensive <laughs> to make than you would think. Yeah, yeah, they are. And I agree. Chirp has a wonderful app. I'm a really big fan of Chirp, and I'm very excited that they exist now. They also give 50% royalty to uh, to authors, which is quite good. It's actually quite a bit better than what you get from a lot of other distributors. Yeah, I think the ACX royalty is a 30% royalty, if I'm not mistaken. Depends on if you go exclusive with them. Okay, so how does that work? Uh, if you go exclusive with ACX, I think it's it goes to 40%. And I believe it's 20% if you're non-exclusive through the sales through Audible. And then they do a split for um, the other retailers. I, I don't have it in front of me, so I'd have to double check on that. Yeah, because I think if you, uh, for a long time, Audible was the sole uh, supplier of audiobooks to iTunes. So if you bought an audiobook in iTunes, it was actually an Audible audiobook. Um, now that Apple's running their own bookstore, that competes with Amazon, they're not quite as much in bed with Audible as they used to be. But I still think Audible supplies the iBooks audiobook market. But I think there's other ways into that market outside of Audible. But that's impressive that Chirp gives, gives a bigger royalty without ex expecting exclusivity. Right? So Audible, if you're going through ACX, is a 40% revenue split. Chirp is a 50%. And you can also be on the other audiobook stores. And part of the reason, part of the money behind Chirp is the publishers, the big publishers are nervous about how powerful Audible is. So while Amazon is 50% plus of the kind of traditional book market, Audible is something like 80 or 90% of the audiobook market right now. And that's so much control that they get to start dictating prices and revenue splits and it, things that really make publishers nervous. And so they're all trying to prop up Chirp, which is really good for indie authors who are also getting into Chirp because they're getting the benefit of that, um, those influxes of cash coming into Chirp. Yeah, it's the scary behind-the-scenes stuff that you don't really see, that pressure that's put on to uh, independent publishers, small publishers, medium-sized, big publishers, and it's done behind, behind the curtains, so you don't really see the, the whole impact of that, but it's real stuff. That's right, because if you compare the audiobook royalty split with, say, an ebook royalty split, you get a lot more piece of the pie, so to speak, with an ebook than you do with an audiobook, even though the cost of delivery is not as much. And part of the reason is, is that there is that monopoly power behind audiobooks. But the other benefit of that for our authors is that the anchor price, what readers are used to paying for an audiobook, is also a lot higher. So people, you know, are expecting to pay five dollars for an ebook, give or take, you know, two or three dollars. People are expecting to pay about twelve dollars for an audiobook, give or take about five dollars. Mm -hmm. So if you set your audiobook to ninety nine cents, you are off to the races. That's right. And when you get to keep fifty cents of that, of <laughs> those ninety nine cents, that's really <laughs> good, right? If you do a ninety nine cent deal on your ebook, you're not getting, you're not even getting. 50%. So we talked a lot about Chirp, and I do encourage uh, you listening to sign up for Chirp. It's a free service uh, to sign up for. You'll get, you put in, you know, the kind of audiobooks that you like, and you'll get deals sent to you. I, I have, and it tells you at the top how much money you've saved. So far, I've saved $161 with Chirp. 
the book <laughs> that I personally purchased. But outside of Chirp, what are some other ways to market an audiobook? Well, there's five main ways to mar- market your audiobooks. Number one is digital advertising. Number two is price promotions. We've already talked a little bit about that. Uh, three would be leveraging podcasts and YouTube videos. Four would be public speaking. And number five is to market your ebook and paperback versions. Yeah, so let's jump into the, that PPC, the advertising. How are you promoting your books with advertising like on Facebook or Amazon? Well, with advertising, digital advertising for audiobooks is more challenging. There's less places that you can actually do it. So, for example, on Kin- on Amazon's advertising platform, you can't really advertise audiobooks. Uh, so the main two advertising platforms for uh, pay-per-click advertising platforms, these are self-serve advertising platforms that you set up the ad and who you want it to be sent to, and then you pay for every click that you get. Those two main ones are Facebook advertising and BookBub advertising. Uh, they work best when coupled with price promo- promotions, of course, and you probably won't make money advertising just one audiobook. Uh, series are much much easier to advertise, uh, and it's one of the ways that you can be more successful with digital advertising for audiobooks is to try to remove every barrier to purchase that you possibly can. But your three main concerns in digital advertising are the the targeting, the cost per sale, and the scalability of the ads. So, for example, on Facebook advertising, you set up an ad. You say that you want the ad to be served to a certain group of people, maybe people who are interested in Audible and also interested in Christian novels. You can serve an ad with a picture that you put and text that you put to that audience and and try to get them to click your link to go purchase your book on Audible. Uh, that when you target the reader, uh, you're you're looking for the type of person who would be likely to want to listen to your book, because if you're trying to target uh, someone who's only interested in World War II planes, but you're trying to sell them Christian romance, it's probably not going to give you a good return. So it's important that you pick an advertising platform that lets you target your ideal reader as closely as possible. Depending on your genre, it may not be possible to do that well on these different platforms. But then the next thing you're worried about is the cost per sale. How many dollars do you have to spend on average to get someone to purchase your product that you are advertising? Uh, Now, Thomas, I know you've, you've talked a lot about calculating return on investment, um, on on this show, and uh, a, an easy, simple way to do that is to take your net profit and divide it by your total investment to, and multiply it by 100. You can look at this calculation online. But basically, if you spend $3 and you get $6 in royalties out of that, then your net profit is $3. So you divide $3 by your total investment of $3, and that's one. You multiply by 100, and now you get 100% return on investment. That means every time you put a dollar into the advertising, you get $1 out. This is a way that you can make sure that you are actually pulling a profit with your advertising. Sometimes it's very difficult to see whether or not you're losing money or making money on advertising. You want to measure that as you go. You don't want to just spend and spend and spend on advertising, and after you spent thousands of dollars check to see if you've made a profit or not because not all books work with advertising and not all series work with advertising so doing a big promotion for book one of a series only works if you have a good read-through rate and this is true not just with audiobooks but also ebooks and paper books right if half the people reading book one in your series give up on the book and tell themselves they'll finish it and they never get around to it, they're not going to buy book two, right? Whereas if almost everyone who reads book one, they read it in a weekend or in one day, and then they're immediately looking for book two in that series, that's a high sell-through rate. And those kinds of series will perform better with advertising. I remember when I read Hunger Games for the first time, I immediately purchased book two and book three of the series because I knew I was so sold on the writing and the characters that I didn't want to wait. (laughs) Even the few minutes it would have taken to buy book three, I wanted to be able to go straight from book two straight on uh, to book three. That's an indication of a a book with a really high 
sell through rate. And these are all things that if you're indie published, you have access to this data. If you're traditionally published, you don't. You don't have access to the data to be able to figure out your sell through rate, but your publisher does. And your publisher is going to use that data to determine whether or not they give you additional book contracts and also how big those advances are. If they see that your books are selling really well and they're selling through really well and people are going from book one to book two, they're going to give you a bigger contract for book three than if you don't have a good uh, sell-through rate or read-through rate. And uh, this is why craft is so important <laughs> because it affects the marketing in these um, otherwise very boring kind of oh numbers and math kind of ways. Yeah, I know it sounds very... I know a lot of people's eyes are probably like glazing over, as I mentioned, return on investment. But if you can't calculate return on investment, if you don't have access to sales in relatively short period of time, then you shouldn't be investing in digital advertising like this. Uh, you won't be able to know that what you're doing is actually making an impact. And that's a dangerous way to uh, waste all your money. So you have to be careful about this. And this, all most of these strategies uh, for digital advertising just aren't going to apply to you if you don't have good sales data. But what what uh, Thomas was talking about, you know, you continue to calculate return on investment because your profitability fluctuates. We don't live in a perfect world. You know, once you calculate it once, it doesn't mean it's always going to be that. An ad on one week is going to be different on week two or week three. Say, for example, going back to targeting, that you target 10,000 people on Facebook. Well, as soon as you get all 10,000 people to see your ad, and you keep trying to serve it to those same people, your profitability will go down. So you have to be careful and look into the next item, which is scalability. Can you continu continue serving the ad to more new people? On BookBub, their platform, that's a problem because their audience is much smaller than Facebook's is. So you can run good ads on BookBub for audiobooks, which is a, currently a beta pro program that they're opening up slowly. You can now... Uh, run small ads that are profitable for a short period of time, but you can't go far beyond that. On Facebook, you can go much further beyond that. You can target 500,000 people who are interested in Christian fiction and continue scaling your ads up month after month. All right, we're almost out of time, but I do want to hit on these other elements of marketing really quickly. Public speaking makes sense, right? You mention it from the stage and you try to do as much public speaking as you can. Obviously, can't really do public speaking in 2020, so we're not going to talk about that one too much. But there will come a day in the future, hopefully, God willing, when we gather together to, again and listen to public speakers uh, speak. Uh, but uh, real briefly, let's talk about uh, YouTube and podcasts, and then we'll go on to talk about um, cross promotion, cross promoting with ebook and paper. So, how do you leverage your platform to sell your audiobooks on podcasts and YouTube videos? Well, podcasts are a great way to reach audio listeners because podcast listeners are audio listeners. They are the people who will buy audiobooks. So if you reach out to podcasts who have a similar audience to what you're reaching, say, for example, that you're writing books on um, uh, godly parenting, reach out to podcasts uh, on that very same topic or on, on uh, how to parent children effectively uh, from a Christian perspective and ask if they would be willing to uh, feature an interview with you on their podcast talking about your book or about the things that you are an expert in. And if you get on their podcast, that can be a great way to reach their audience and to serve their audience and to have some of them become part of your audience. You can also sponsor podcasts, but that tends to get kind of expensive. Um, YouTube channels, same deal. If you have uh, YouTube channels that you watch that reach a similar audience to what you do, then reach out to them. Find their website, reach out to them, ask if they'd be willing to do an interview with you, or perhaps you could consider sponsoring one of their YouTube videos. I actually did this on uh, a Christian YouTube channel, Blimey Cow, and it actually worked quite well. It, it, it can be expensive and it can be risky, but it can work really well if the video does very well. The one that I had sponsored ended up doing very, very well, getting hundreds of thousands of views. So, yeah, walk us through those numbers real quick. How much did it cost you to sponsor that video? Well, back then I sponsored the video for $1,000, and the video has gotten, I think, around half a million views. And the what I was trying to do with the video was to get people to download my lead, lead magnet 
at my website to go onto my email list. And I got well over a thousand subscribers from that one sponsorship. Which is a uh, dollar per subscriber. If you have enough books and you're indie published can totally be worth it because you, you know, let's say you get 30% of them to become readers. As long as you're selling your book for more than a $3 profit, that's very profitable. And, you know, ideally they're going to go on to buy more than just one book. And, but, but to be clear, you didn't create the video. You just gave some text to the person who did create the video to read at the end of the video. They're like, this video is brought to you by, and then they, they read your text. Is that, is that how it worked? Exactly. Yep. I paid them to basically promote me. So I didn't have to really do anything. I just gave them the link that I wanted to promote and they did the rest. In essence, what you're doing is you're borrowing someone else's platforms. So you're giving them $1,000 or $5,000 or $50. You know, the price is set based off of how popular they've been in the past. And blimey cow, that's actually a YouTube channel I used to watch. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they're, they do kind of comedic um, videos, very much targeting your audience of kind of that YA market of young homeschool graduates you know the people who do blimey cow are homeschooled and they do a lot of topics that kind of speak to that culture they're not explicitly homeschooled uh, but they're very popular in that world okay real quick let's talk about uh, ebook promotion and paperback promotion and how those can work with audiobook where you get a nice symbiosis yeah so on on amazon for example when you have an audiobook that's on audible it then gets linked to your ebook and paperback versions of that same book. So when you're promoting your ebook and paperback versions of your book on Amazon, then the people go to your, your sales page and they see that it's in audio. A certain number of those people that you promote that to will end up just purchasing the audiobook or listening to the audiobook because they prefer audio or they have a credit to spare. And so when you promote your ebook and paperback versions of the audiobooks or, uh, that you have attached to the audiobooks, you do get this bloom effect where you you when you get more sales of the ebook and paperback, you get more sales of the audiobook. So there's this symbiotic relationship between them. And that really is the best uh, way for you to grow your your audiobook audience in the beginning if you find these other uh, tactics too difficult or outside of your reach. So say for example, if you're a traditionally published author, the best way you can make sure that your audiobook does well really probably will be to make sure that your ebook and paperback versions do well. And if your book is really good, if people really enjoy it, they may want to own it in multiple formats. There's some stats I've heard as much as 50%, which I don't believe, but a lot of audiobook listeners, if they really enjoy the book, will go on to buy the paper book just to have an artifact of that experience that they have. Yeah. Or even just to show it off in their shelf. Oh, and uh, there's also a way to link audible will link your progress through the book with the ebook. Uh, and some people will kind of switch back and forth, right? They'll listen to the audiobook and, you know, for the first three or four chapters, and then they'll be reading the ebook and they go back and forth and Amazon will discount the cost of the book uh, to encourage that kind of behavior. I don't know how many people switch back and forth for me. Anyway, I really get, invested in the narrator's performance of the book. <laughs> I wouldn't want to switch to reading it. But for other people, maybe they're in a noisy environment and they don't want to stop the story, right? So you pull it up on their phone and they will read it and then they'll switch back and forth. That's all possible. And that's more money in the pocket of the author, the more formats of the book the reader buys. All right, uh, Brandon, where can people find out more about you? Well, they can go to my website, brennanmcpherson.com. I write a weekly devotional there. And if you guys want to sign up, uh, you'll get a free devotional sent to your in inbox every Saturday morning. All right. And any final tips or encouragement? Uh, I would give the tip of don't be stressed out if you don't get sales right away. Uh, w when you publish a book, you can sell that book in the, in the next few years. You know, Years from now, you can continue to sell it. Uh, one of the best ways to take control of your career is to write longer series and then uh, try to do better with each launch on marketing your books and just continue. Keep at it. Eventually, you will grow your readership if you do these small steps over and over again and get better at them. You don't have to do everything today. Be patient with yourself and with the process. All right. Excellent. Uh, Brennan McPherson, thank you so much for joining us today on the Christian Publishing Show. Thanks so much for having me, Thomas. 
Thank you for listening to the Christian Publishing Show. For more information and to get episodes delivered to your phone automatically, visit ChristianPublishingShow.com.